So it's a very important, momentous and exciting day for India. This first privately manufactured UAV being uh, flagged off by the Naval Chief. I have with me Ashish Rajwanshi, CEO of Adani Aerospace. Very exciting and when you see something like this, it sounds like the high-tech thing of India and indigenously manufactured, 70% indigenous. How much is this going to help the Indian Navy in terms of the kind of recent threats we have seen over the seas? See, we need to appreciate how the doctrine is changing from man to unmanned. A couple of years back, we were the first one uh, in the country to talk about unmanned is going to be the future and man will become passe. In 2019, when we set up this facility, uh, there were many naysayers who thought, oh, this is something which is not going to happen. And they were not able to appreciate how this has become the mainstay when you look at the geopolitical conflict happening in Eastern Europe or in the Middle East in terms of intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance. Today, we have the foot soldier in India who is actually doing ISR. But unless we complement the foot soldiers with technology in terms of either unmanned systems, in terms of satellite and cyber, we will never do our missions in full. What we have set up is a full line uh, from structures, avionics, electronics, payloads within the country with more than 70% indigenization. And this is the first bird which is going to my Indian customer, Indian Navy. Very proud moment for us. It's a flagship, it's a watershed moment for India. It's a dream come true for our chairman, Mr. Gautam Adani, who always talks about the vision of how do we support and play a humble role in India growth story and supporting the Indian armed forces. 70% indigenization is very impressive. Uh, does this mean that you have many, many more enterprises that you're actually supporting to integrate it finally into this farm? Absolutely. The very philosophy of Adani is not about doing everything on its own. It's important how do we support the wider ecosystem of MSMEs, startups and others who can actually work with us. When we kickstarted a business many years back, what we realized was that the technology, talent and the passion is actually existing. What they were not able to find is a big platform which can actually support them. Today, I have more than 75 suppliers and tier one partners who are working across our businesses. We have invested more than 1500 crores just in the growth of these MSMEs, giving them a platform and giving them work so that they can go from point A to point B. Walk us through the features of uh, this particular UAV. This is one of the most advanced ISR UAV in the global market. Wow. Uh, three or four things which are very important to appreciate. It's an all-weather uh, UAV. Some of our missions, what we do in North, uh, are in extreme temperature. So it has a de-icing feature built into this. Uh, some of the missions which we are doing in Indian Ocean, range becomes important. This is the first SATCOM-enabled indigenous UAV. And SATCOM means that the range is no longer an issue. Uh, you want to do a 1,000 kilometers uh, mission or you want to do a 4,000 kilometers mission, it's possible. Number three, in terms of the payload, it has some of the most advanced payload, which are not tied to the OEM technology. So tomorrow, if a company in India is creating its own payload on electro optics, on comment or LN, we can actually integrate those in this bird. Number fourth, this is the first bird in the global market, uh, which doesn't need any segregation of airspace. So what we call Stanax certification, it can fly both in segregated and unsegregated space because the traditional UAVs which are in the military domain require special permissions in the civil domain. The Naval Chief himself mentioned that uh, within 10 months, which is before the deadline itself, you were able to deliver. How did that happen? And uh, there are more that they are expecting you to deliver to the Army as well. This is the core DNA of Adani Group. When we talk about making a commitment and putting perseverance around it, then we don't leave any stone unturned in terms of how and best we deliver to our customers. What we did in the last 10 months was a function of the preparation we had done over the previous three or four years in terms of robust capabilities, very strong quality management systems which were rolled out at our tier one, tier two partners. More importantly, training our people on the technology and despite the conflict which was happening in the Middle East, we got all the support from our global partners uh, to take it to the next level. So in record time, the final assembly line was set up uh, we were able to uh, gather the electronics, avionics, the payloads and get the bird ready, which is going to be inducted by end of this month into Indian Navy. And operationalized by when? Operationalized latest by 1st of March. And the two other birds that you're giving to the Indian Army? Uh, the bird delivery is going to happen in the second quarter, which is April, May, June. And by 1st of July, they should be inducted into Indian Army also.
was part of course is the indigenization but you're also positioning india as a global leader in this uh, very high tech and should i say very competitive market now absolutely the very dream slash vision of our honorable prime minister that how do you make india the hub for global exports is the vision with we are working with this is not about just applying to the captive audience but bringing india on the global map in terms of technology leadership in terms of uh, taking a advanced platform to the global markets and proving that we have the talent we have the passion we have the perseverance to show that india is here and india is ready okay you spoke about 70% indigenization is it, is it important that we actually increase that percentage much more uh, this is of course a very critical sector on which uh, uh, on which the prime minister also speaks about see what we need to appreciate is it has taken decades and decades in the global markets for some of these technologies to be created and absorbed uh, we are trying to cut short the time significantly one of the key capability which is yet missing in the country is the engine capability so one thing we haven't been able to indigenize yet is the engine which is going into the cuv and second are some of the advanced payloads like sky eye and comment which are going to be the next phase but we're not going to leave any stone unturned we will move to 100% okay beyond the uav you are also looking at uh, you know the entire space of uh, aerospace and defense as well tell us about something uh, more that you're working on that is very f- making us more future proof see when we kick started our whole plan was based on what will india need in 2040 rather than what india needed in 1980 so with the inputs from uh, the forces the right policy makers we identified three areas which are of critical focus for adani one is intelligence surveillance reconnaissance in case your isr fails yeah how do we protect the land border the naval border uh, the maritime border in terms of the air defense systems it could be anti drone systems it could be munitions it could be interceptors it could be artillery guns that is the second big focus area the third is how do i enhance the capability slash the equipment which is provided to the frontline soldier so small arms and ammunition is another area which we are working on in gwalior and kanpur and all these things will only become sustainable if you support them with strong robust mro capabilities within india so maintenance repair overhaul unless it happens in india we'll continue to stay dependent on the international market so that is the fourth area of focus for adani defense thank you so much uh, so you. this is something that makes india proud uh, talking about self reliance and also taking a global leadership position in hyderabad with camera person nagraju uma sudhir ndtv